Saints quarterback Drew Brees is going to miss an unknown period of time after suffering multiple rib fractures and a collapsed lung. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and this is your number one source for learning about the unique medical side of the world of sports. The injuries reportedly occurred over the span of multiple weeks, but on this big hit that Brees took, certainly things got worse. As always, if you enjoy learning about this unique side of sports, then please consider subscribing to my channel and be sure and go follow me over on Twitter for more real-time breakdowns and analysis. Now the official report is that Drew Brees has rib fractures on both sides of his chest and it collapsed along on the right side. Injuries were suffered over a couple of weeks and so far it's uncertain how long he's gonna be out. This is a play where Breeze took this huge hit as the defensive lineman basically comes down on top of him all of his weight lands into Drew Brees, putting excessive pressure on his ribs, making whatever fractures were there worse and potentially causing the collapsed lung or new fractures. Now, the majority of our ribs have two articulation points. They start all the way back in the spine, articulating with the vertebral column, and then wrap around to insert onto the sternum or the breastbone. Ribs one all the way down through seven are what we consider true ribs, meaning they articulate with the vertebral column and the sternum in the front of the chest. As we move down lower, ribs eight, nine, and 10 are considered false ribs because they don't directly articulate with the sternum, rather they're connected to this costal cartilage that is then indirectly connected up to the lower portion of the sternum. Then all the way down at the very bottom, ribs 11 and 12 are called floating ribs. These ribs still articulate with the back of the spine, but as you can see, they're free. They're floating, meaning there's no connection all the way in the front. Because of the attachment points, certain ribs are more likely to break than others. Ribs one, two, and three are the least likely to fracture because of just their general size, they're relatively small compared to the rest of the ribs and they don't sustain as much load. But then these middle ribs are the ones that are more likely to break. These ribs four through six up to seven, eight are gonna be more likely to fracture based on just the way they're positioned, their size. They're kind of at that perfect bad position of size and location to be most likely to fracture. When we get all the way down to the bottom then, it's really hard to get fractures of these floating ribs because again, one end is completely free in space. As the defender comes through here and lands on Drew Brees, all of that load is being forced into his chest which puts direct pressure and compression on his ribs. But these lower ribs, because they're floating here on the outside, it's easier for them to be pushed and move around and not break. Now, as we've seen, there's no report that Brees is expected to have surgery, which is typical for rib fractures. Unless someone has a condition called a flailed chest, it's pretty rare for rib fractures to initially go to surgery. A flailed chest is basically when there's a fracture in two locations of a series of ribs, so that you basically have a free segment of rib and muscle that move independent from the rest of the chest. This is something we see in very high speed, high energy types of injuries like motor vehicle accidents or major falls. But most simple rib fractures that aren't overly displaced are gonna heal up like any fracture otherwise. Now the other piece that Drew Brees is dealing with here is something called a collapsed lung or pneumothorax. Pneumo means air and thorax is the chest. And so this pneumothorax is when there's air that's abnormally inside the chest that causes the lungs to collapse. To understand a pneumothorax, we have to get a sense of how the pressures are normally distributed within the chest. Our lungs here are surrounded by two layers of tissue. The first that's directly attached or connected to the lungs is something called the visceral pleura. And then there's another layer of pleura that's on the chest wall called the parietal pleura. So this is a cross section looking again, this purple tissue is gonna be the lung. We of course have our ribs, the muscles between the ribs, our skin, and then the nerves and blood vessels. But this blue layer directly on the lung, that's gonna be that visceral pleura. And this other blue layer is the parietal. And you can see there's this potential space between those two linings. The pressure in this space is normally less than the general atmospheric pressure outside of our body. This means that if anything punctures that pleura, allowing air to get into the chest wall, the pressure is gonna go up and that pressure is gonna cause the lung to collapse in. You go from a negative pressure space to a positive pressure space, causing that lung to get pushed and collapsed inward. Because one of these lungs is then collapsed, you're gonna have a harder time breathing and getting oxygen to your body, making you feel short of breath. If the lung is collapsed enough, then doctors will put a chest tube in to basically suction that extra air out and drain the air from that pleural cavity. Sometimes this means leaving a chest tube in place. Sometimes if it's small enough, you can basically just let that air resorb on its own and you don't have to put in a chest tube. So what exactly they have to do for Breeze's pneumothorax depends entirely on how bad it is. The fact they're not putting him on IR tells me that maybe it's not severe enough to warrant needing a chest tube, but we'll have to see. In Breeze's case, what most likely happens 
happened is whatever piece of bone was fractured from the rib punctured that pleural lining, allowing the air to get into that space. The other thing that can happen is if you puncture enough layers, the air that you breathe into the lungs can escape the lungs and fill up that space as well. Important other little tidbit to touch on here, you can see how certain ribs overlie the lungs. And of course, if those are fractured, we're gonna be more worried about a collapsed lung in those instances. But when we have fractures of these lower ribs, there's a whole other set of organs we have to worry about injury to. This muscle here is the diaphragm that helps to control our breathing, but just tucked into that diaphragm on the right side, we're gonna find the liver. On the left side, we're gonna find the spleen. And so lower rib fractures can result in lacerations to the liver, to the spleen, and other intra-abdominal organs because of their proximity to those structures. So by now we probably would know if Breeze was gonna require surgery for his rib fractures, and it doesn't sound like he is. We'd also probably have a sense of if he needed a chest tube for his collapsed lung, and we also haven't gotten word of that. In terms of why he was playing with these broken ribs, well, they simply might not have known that he had rib fractures. Guys are getting beat up and hurt and sore all the time, and so unless he's having shortness of breath or took a specific big hit, there's not really a guarantee that they need to go look at the x-ray. Also, x-rays can miss rib fractures up to 50% of the time. Take a look at this x-ray. Tell me what you see. There's rib fractures on here. It's even hard for me to see these because one, I'm not a radiologist, but rib fractures are hard to pick up on x-ray. They're basically down here on the right side of the chest and you can maybe, if you look close, see a little bit of mildly displaced kind of nature to them, but these aren't like broken femurs, broken arms. Rib fractures are hard to see on x-ray, so it's possible they did an x-ray and they just didn't catch them. Now, pneumothorax, on the other hand, is pretty easy to catch on a chest x-ray. If we look here, this is gonna be the left lung. This is gonna be the right lung. And you can see this blue arrow basically pointing to this shriveled up tiny right lung because of all this air in the chest wall that's pushing it down. Over on the left side, we've got nice full lung tissue all the way around the margins. But over here, you can see nothing, just a bunch of air and tiny little lung. This bat of a pneumothorax is probably gonna get a chest tube, but you can have them where it's just the very top of the lung that's collapsed and you don't need the chest tube. So we'll follow the course of Breeze's recovery. Hopefully he's able to get back in time for the playoffs and doesn't need to go on IR or miss any extended time, but this is gonna be painful. Even when he comes back, he's probably still gonna be dealing with some residual soreness that could affect his play out on the field. That's it for the video though, everybody. Thank you as always for watching. Let me know any questions or comments down below, and until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.